The quest for flavor is hardwired into all cooks, so sometimes you cook simply to satisfy a craving. A powerful aromatic memory can trigger inspiration in any kitchen. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. Every now and then, I crave the flavor of smoke. Especially in the summer, when everybody's grilling and barbecuing, I can't fight it. So either I hit the bacon, or I rig my backyard smoker for crazy flavor and get cooking. I've been thinking smoky thoughts for days. So this morning, I took the time to brine this chicken. That'll guarantee its juiciness when I smoke roast it. But hey, first things first. This little baby is my pride and joy. That big baby over there is my pride and joy too, but if I tried to build a wood fire in that, I'd ruin it. Let's just say, this is last year's model. Now I've stripped all the gas works right out of it. It makes a perfect smokehouse, I use it all the time. But unlike that gas-powered stainless steel state-of-the-art monster, my old friend here is wood-powered. Around here we burn a bunch of different kinds of wood, but I save all the best wood for my smokehouse, my hardwood, my maple. You can't burn softwood when you're trying to smoke food, mainly because woods like pine and fir have a sort of rosinous smoke that leaves this oily film on the food that just doesn't taste good. Instead, stick to hardwood. Hardwoods like maple have a wonderful aromatic smoke, hey, that'll definitely satisfy my craving. I'm basically going to smoke and roast the chicken at the same time. That means I'm going to need lots of heat and lots of smoke. And for that, I'll need to have a nice hot bed of coals with some freshly smoldering wood sitting on top of it. First, of course, I've got to build a big fire. Now one of the keys to a successful fire is to have lots of wood standing by ready to go. Now at this point I simply need to wait for this fire to burn down for a nice big bed of coals to form and then I'm ready to bring the chicken on. But you know what, I can't wait that long for some smoky flavor. There's actually quite a few smoky flavors in your kitchen already. Smoked ham, smoked turkey, smoked bacon, and sometimes smoked cheese. Now when I was a kid, one of my dad's favorite snacks were smoked sardines. Now they're one of my favorite snacks. Now my dad loved mustard with his sardines, and so do I. But I'm not going to stop there. Let's see. Maybe some fresh herbs, parsley, nah. Oh yeah, some sprouts. Rachel loves smoked sardines too. They're actually very common on Grand Manan Island where she's from. There's still smokehouses dotting the island everywhere you look. Let's take some grainy mustard. Pop it right on like that. 
Okay, I'll put the sprouts right on top. Okay, I'm gonna need a little bit of pepper. But no salt, because the smoked sardines are already cured in salt. They don't need any more salt added. But they would like a little bit of olive oil. Now that's what I call a smoky snack. Things are starting to look up. This'll take a bite out of my smoky appetite, but I'm not done yet. There's a juicy chicken on the smoky horizon, too. You know, if you're craving a particular flavor, like smoke, the best thing to do, get fired up and make it happen. I started with a hardwood fire in my old barbecue. It'll soon be a perfect bed of coals, ready to fire a juicy brine chicken that I just happen to have standing by. Now man cannot live with smoky flavors alone. We still need a vegetable now and then. Now the other day at the market, I picked up a spaghetti squash. I think today's the day to cook it off. You know, I had no sweet clue what to do with the first spaghetti squash I ever crossed paths with. I was a young apprentice cook. I'd seen them in magazines and I liked to try new things, so I picked one up and brought it home. But then I mucked it all up by trying to scrape out its strands before I cooked it off. Uh-uh, you gotta cook it off first. Here's how. It's really quite simple. Just throw it into a pan, give it a couple of pin pricks. That should do it. And then pop it into a 400 degree oven. After an hour or so, it'll soften up and you'll see why it's called a spaghetti squash. It's time to wake up this chicken. There are three simple steps to getting smoky flavors on the table. The food, of course, the fire, and a juicy brine. Now, I've been brining food for years. It's the kind of simple chef's technique that easily transfers to any cook's kitchen. Brining is a great way to add moisture and seasoning to relatively bland white meats like chicken. Begin by adding one cup of salt and one cup of sugar into one gallon of cold water. Whisk away until they both dissolve and disappear. The salt in the water will encourage the meat to loosen up and absorb some of the pleasantly seasoned brine. The sugar will actually help the chicken brown. For best results, soak the bird in the brine for about two hours or so. Not long enough to make the meat salty, but long enough to make it juicy. Then, get ready to enjoy the juiciest chicken you ever tasted. Now it's a good idea to rinse off any chicken before you start roasting it, whether it's been brined or not. And since I'm looking for that nice crisp skin that makes any chicken awesome, I also want to dry it off well before it heads out for that grill. This way the skin will just crisp up better. Alright. This bird's ready to start its smoky journey. Now this is what I'm looking for, a nice hot bed of coals, perfect. But that chicken's going to sit here for a good hour, so there might be just a little bit too much heat here right now. There's an easy solution for that though. Here's what I do. I'll simply scrape all those coals over to one side, wow that's hot in there, there we go. And now I've got my oven heat on this side, and a little bit less heat over on this side. Pop that grill on.
Okay, here comes that chicken. I'm just going to position it right about there, and now it's away from the direct heat of those coals. Perfect. Now I still have the opportunity to add a bit more flavor. At this point, you could throw in some of those nice flavored fruit wood chips that you see in some of the hardware stores, or you could simply just add a couple more pieces of whatever wood it is that you're burning. Maple. There we go. Oh, that's hot in there. So what's going to happen is that those fresh pieces of wood are really going to smolder. They're going to be the primary source of the smoke flavor. The chicken will take about the same amount of time that it would take in any oven. About an hour, maybe even an hour and a half. That's plenty of time for me to finish up that spaghetti squash. Backyard smokehouse is smoking away. I'm trying to satisfy my craving for some primal smoke flavor. Ever since I was a young cook, I've known that the only way to make a flavor obsession like smoke go away is to give in to it. So I brined a chicken to guarantee its juiciness and now it's resting comfortably next to a smoky hardwood fire. Things are looking up. I've also baked off a spaghetti squash. It's a little hot to handle right now. In the meantime, I'm looking for something hardy and rustic. Perhaps a grain. Something to stand up to the classic smokiness of that chicken. Well, that rules out white rice, but brown rice would work. This is what white rice looks like before its flavor and nutrition is polished off. It's got this wonderful, earthy, nutty flavor. I love this stuff. But you know, I can't resist. I've got to add something else to it. Maybe some nuts, or some dried fruit, or some fresh fruit, apples. Yeah. Apples and brown rice. That's got a nice ring to it. Cooking brown rice is as simple as cooking any kind of rice. All you have to remember is how much water to add to it. For every cup of brown rice, you need two cups of water. Of course, that water could be anything. You could use chicken stock. You know what? I might as well use apple juice. So I'll add some more apple flavor to the rice. In goes the juice and the rice. Now this apple's going to get chopped up and head in there as well. There's another flavor that makes sense here too. Some cinnamon. And while I'm at it, I might as well add some raisins. Okay, all I've got to add to this now is a little bit of heat. Okay, spaghetti squash, I think you're ready to go. Now squashes are naturally loaded with moisture, so baking this off in the oven really loosened up its flesh. And now I've got these beautiful stringy strands of squash. Here's something I've been meaning to try. Since this looks like a bowl full of spaghetti, why not turn it into a pasta salad? For that, I need some basil and some tomatoes. Now, I don't have any fresh basil, but I do have some basil pesto, and I don't have any fresh tomatoes either, but I've got some dry tomatoes. Now, these pieces are pretty big, so I think I'll cut these down a bit. Now, what else do I want to add to that? There's no green in there right now, so maybe I've got some, I know, I've got some fresh parsley. Some Italian flat leaf parsley. There we go. A little bit of salt. 
and perhaps a splash of balsamic vinegar and some olive oil. These are all flavors you would expect to see in a standard pasta salad. Look at all that smoke. I can't wait to see how this chicken looks. I can't wait to taste this chicken. You know, I think craving smoke flavor is one of the most primal urges that any cook can have. But what if you don't have an old barbecue like this sitting on your deck? What if you don't want an old barbecue like this sitting on your deck? Well, there's plenty of ways to add smoke flavor to food. Hey, in my neighborhood, it doesn't matter what's parked in the driveway. It's what's parked on the back porch that we pay attention to. And whether you're the proud owner of a spiffy live fire pit like this one, or if you prefer gas in your tank to grill, don't despair. You too can smoke out your neighbors. The only real difference between a smoker and a grill, any grill, is that a smoker keeps the food away from the flame. Easy. Simply build your fire on one side or turn off half the heat in your gas guzzler. But either way, remember, grills are designed to be fast and furious. So slow down the heat and allow your food lots of quality time with the smoke. Now, for smoke, you're going to need wood. But if you don't happen to have a forest in your backyard, and if you don't feel like burning Aunt Millie's old rocking chair, you can simply use wood chips. I do find that these work best if you soak half of them in water. That way you get instant smoke from the dry ones and long smoldering smoke from the wet ones. You'll also find that your neighbors just happen to stop by around dinner time, you know, to kick the tires on your new smokehouse. Now that was worth the wait. Doesn't that look amazing? Don't you just want to eat it? I know I do. But how do you know when it's done? It's only done when it hits an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This chicken is perfectly roasted, smoke roasted. Time for dinner. I think the quest for flavor is hardwired into all cooks, especially smoke flavor. Now this chicken has just spent some quality time in my backyard smokehouse. It's also spent a few minutes out of the smokehouse because any roast chicken needs some time to relax. Think of it this way, all those juicy molecules in there, well, they get a little riled up when they get heated. They get agitated, they move around. They need time to calm down. When they rest, they redistribute out into the meat. The meat is juicy. It really is that simple. And now that that chicken is rested, it's time to rest it on some rice. Some apple brown rice. Let's pile that right up here. Apple brown rice with smoke roast chicken. Doesn't that just sound good? It's gonna taste good too. Now when you're trying to cut a roast chicken, start by simply cutting in between the leg and the breast. And then feel for the breastbone. There it is right there. Run your knife right along that breastbone, just like that. And then run your knife right down the rib cage. There we go. There's one breast. There we go. Then cut off the legs. Very nice. 
Now these wings are pretty tasty too. I'll slice them off as well. Smoked chicken wings. Now this carcass has lots of flavor in it too. Just because it's smoked doesn't mean you can't make a quick chicken broth out of it. I'll toss that into a pot later, cover it off with some water, and I'll have a quick chicken broth for something else tomorrow perhaps. And look at that right there. Now that's what I call supper. Smoke roast chicken with apple brown rice and a spaghetti squash salad. I don't think leftovers are gonna be a problem tonight. You know, if you can't get a particular flavor out of your mind, the best thing to do is just give in and go for it. Satisfy your aromatic urges and who knows, you just might fill your table with a dinner that no one will ever forget. Where do you want to sit? This looks yummy. Look what we have it. We have spaghetti squash salad. Yum. And smoke roast chicken. You can smell the smoke on the chicken. Can you ever, huh? Mm -hmm. Get your fork ready. Mmm. Oh, man, is that ever good? Mmm. Spaghetti squash. One bite. It tastes like apple pie. Look here. Apples. I'll try that. Thank you for trying it, though. Cheers. 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 Here's to primal urges. <laughs>